Yeah, it's just digging the back end in. Yeah, it's definitely gotten rutted out a good bit. This is the new Canem Outlander Pro XU, one of the new ATVs in the Outlander lineup. And this from Canem is one of their combination work and play ATV. So we're going to get it out on our off-road course here at Tumbleweed Ranch and also show you some of the features that make this new. All right, so um, it's uh, pretty overcast. It's been raining a ton here in Colorado and it looks like it's about to start raining again. So our back course is insanely muddy. Um, and I mean, the thing is that this crossover course that we use to test like RAV4s and CRVs, this is all just entirely too easy for this quad. What would be really ideal is if we could get this out to one of the trails that we test at up in the mountains, but a lot of them are still thawing out. Now I'm in two wheel drive right now and so far, <laughs> yeah, I'm not even coming close to needing four wheel drive yet. I've also got power steering on this model, which is really nice to have. Now let's see if we can't get this ATV a little articulated. So this is a course feature that we call the trenches and these ruts are designed to be spaced such that uh, it articulates for, you know, a full-on passenger car. And we try to go, especially at the steepest section, as slow as possible to try and challenge vehicles. But I think partly because of the spacing of these ruts, um, <laughs> I mean, this ATV is making pretty good contact with the ground. And <laughs> yeah, I'm still just not needing anything close to using the four-wheel drive. It's going to be horrifically muddy, but I say we go to the back course and just check out at least a couple features. And by the way, if you just got an ATV or if you've been riding for a while and you need some new gear, Revzilla, our partners, have a bunch of really great gear, including everything that you see me wearing here in this video today. This built brand of theirs makes some really good looking and actually fairly affordable gear. So if you need something, check out Revzilla. Part of what makes this Can-Am new is the styling and one of the biggest ways that you can see that are these new LED headlights. So no longer are they round headlights on this model. So they've updated that a little bit. And then there's a lot of things that you get standard on these Outlanders and especially with the pros. So this one that you see here has a push bar up front. We also have a rack on the front that is capable of holding 120 pounds. And there are different packages of accessories that you can get so that you can increase the storage and build it out however you want it to be. You've also got a pretty decent size storage bin up here with a weather seal. You can see a little bit of dust and dirt in here. So maybe don't throw anything that's too susceptible to, uh, to mud or dirt in here. But also kind of cool that you get some drains as well. So potentially, I mean, it's not very insulated, but if you want to throw some ice in here, you could kind of use it as a cooler. And then if we move back, you'll see a digital display up front and I can go ahead and power on the quad. And here you get to see your fuel gauge. You get to see which of your wheels are activated. You get basic information like your speed your temp, and also where your gear position is at. So just some basic information from a pretty simple screen. And then you also have another storage cubby back here. This also has a weather seal on it. So theoretically you should be able to put your phone back here, no problem. And you can even charge it up with the two USB-A ports that are built in to this cubby. Also in front of this cubby, you've got a couple blank areas where you could throw some switches and then there's a whole lot that's built into the handlebars of this ATV. Now part of this being an Outlander Pro XU model is this front diff lock right here. So that's an added feature with this model as well as the intelligent engine braking that you get here and you also get a nicer set of wheels and tires on the Pro XU. So this is one of their work oriented models somewhat in the mid-range because this is also an HD5 as opposed to the available HD7, which is more expensive than this model. 
and it gets you 10 extra horsepower. So this is 40 horsepower from that 650 cc Rotax motor. If you want the 50 horsepower model, it's still a 650 cc, but they put a more aggressive cam and tune in it. So that way you can get a little bit extra. And something cool that they've done here is make it so that you can actually pretty easily access your powertrain. So you just pop off that panel and you can see you get pretty decent access to the motor in here. And then popping this panel back in, I've only done a couple times, so still practicing it, but it's really not too difficult to get that all back together and apart if you need to do anything there. And then the only accessory that this particular quad has on it is this link box back here. So this is not something that comes with the base model, but also pretty cool. It's really easy to remove. You just uh, have a couple of those guys and you can pull this off. And then this rear rack is rated for 240 pounds. So also a good bit of capacity there. And then something else that's new with the new Outlanders is that they're rated to tow up to 1,830 pounds, which is pretty impressive. That's 530 pounds more than before. A really solid number. It's, uh, it's a serious mud pit down there right now, but I have four wheel drive, front locker. I mean, this is also a pretty lightweight machine. If anything is gonna be able to make it through, I have a feeling that this is gonna have no problem. It is muddy. Oh man. Oh, wow. Okay, that's a, uh, yeah, it's definitely gotten rutted out a good bit. Let me take a different line into this. So, so far I haven't run that traction, but I just kind of want to give this a different line because I was lifting up the front end a lot there. But yeah, with a better line, that is no problem whatsoever. And that's the cool thing about an ATV on a trail. We don't get to test uh, quads nearly as much, but they're so narrow compared to most of the off-roaders that we run through this that it's crazy how easily you can just pick any kind of line. Makes it super fun. All right, first section of cottonwood. Definitely has been rutted out a good bit, but it's not gonna be an issue for us right here. If anything, it's gonna be the angle coming out of cottonwood that with this shorter wheelbase and a uh, slightly narrower track of about 48 inches, this will be eh, maybe just a little bit tippy, but I think it'll be fine. So a lot of people, their initial thought is to stay right because it looks shallower there, but then you get set at that really bad angle. So let's see, where do I wanna go? Try and take it more straight on. Ah, that's as tippy as I want to get. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's just digging the back end in. Yeah, we're sitting at a hell of an angle right here. I don't know if this is coming through on video, but this angle is pretty steep. Let me see if I can go a little further left. Because the other thing too is that I'm running up on that route, which is obviously not great for traction. Oh yeah. Hey, buddy. See, that's the thing with something as narrow as this, you get a lot of choice in where you want to take your line. So yeah, really impressive performance out of this, even though this is not necessarily a dedicated off-road quad. All right, now this, at least at one point, was the easier side of our kind of final feature here in our off-road course. It's definitely since been rutted out a good bit, but no problem for this. Yeah, really pretty capable machine, this thing. The new Can-Am Outlander range starts at the lowest end with a two-wheel drive base model at $6,000. But if you want to spec it out to the absolute highest end version, it's almost 11 grand. So there's a huge range in there, and this is somewhere in the middle at $8,900 with some of its extra features. But 
it being the lower power output version. If you want to get the HD7 version of this particular ATV, it's 9700, so it's a decently expensive upgrade to get that extra power. And at the end of the day, this is a really capable machine. There's a lot that it can do. It's not the fastest ATV out there. It's definitely not the most performance oriented, but it's got a lot of good features. You can still have a ton of fun off-roading with it and it's able to do a lot of work. So let us know what you think in the comments down below and we'll catch you all in the next video.